Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. As we think about traffic management in a smart city, we have to reprioritize. Uh, congestion reduction has been a primary goal, as has enhanced safety. We now need to add decarbonization as an equal priority. In the United States, we spend 11 billion hours in traffic every year. We have 6 million car accidents per year, and every vehicle emits an average of 4.6 tons of carbon dioxide every single year. For most of the rest of the world, it's a version of the same story. So for a cleaner, safer, congestion-free world, we know we have to decarbonize urban mobility. Yet even the most optimistic vehicle electrification scenarios envision a 20 plus year fleet turnover. So if we're going to uh, make some progress, we have to be imaginative and relentlessly innovative with the vehicle fleet that's out there today. But how can you fix what you can't accurately measure? In the U.S., CO2 emissions are measured at a regional level, a kind of bubble over each metro area. Emissions reductions can be measured only at the most crude area-wide level, usually on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis. And those measurements are static. They're done once and seldom verified after a new highway or transit system is built. These metro-wide bubble calculations themselves are updated in multi-year increments. So as a result, there's little faith, understandably, in the accuracy of these crude measurements and no practical way to measure granular impacts on individual neighborhoods. But if you took the latest AI video processing technology and used it to create a digital twin that's constantly uh, responding to current traffic conditions, you could use that digital twin to predict and optimize traffic and calculate the CO2 reduction on an individual vehicle basis. Think of this digital twin as a kind of carbon calculator where the type of vehicle, the road conditions, the AI-based driver profile could result in continuous emissions calculations. Think about how much more accurately we could measure carbon dioxide levels at the local level and overall carbon reduction if it was based on individual vehicles and their individual characteristics. You could then aggregate that individual vehicle data into much more accurate regional data Rather than a regional model based on average assumptions layered on other assumptions, you could have accurate data. And think about how those verified and cross-checked individual emissions reductions from better traffic flow, more efficient vehicles, and better driving habits could be monetized. We could reward more efficient vehicle use, the use of public transport, walking, bikes, scooters. We could raise funds for further decarbonization, creating a virtuous cycle through verified emissions reductions. The fact is in the short term, this model would represent the fastest and most cost efficient emissions reductions for government entities at the state and local level in the United States and elsewhere. And all of this could be an output from a digital twin fueled by AI video. All the strategies, alternatives and innovations that are being discussed and debated worldwide right now, more efficient public transport, active transportation such as walking and biking, new private business models, electrification, land use and road design changes. These are all important, but they're medium and long-term strategies. We need a shorter term bridge strategy, one that rewards immediate carbon footprint reductions in real time, one that's built on verifiable emissions reductions in individual vehicles, through individual, not quarter-wide or metro area-wide carbon reduction measurements. Since every one of the traditional alternatives will take time, time that's usually measured in years, to develop a physical infrastructure improvements, let's make sure we focus on the innovations that can help now as we rebuild our infrastructure in new ways from the ground up. We can turn every vehicle into a real-time carbon sensor as we build these longer-term global plans for fighting climate change. We all understand the challenge that's in front of us. If we're going to hand off a better world to our children and their children, we have to start today by making better use of the advanced digital tools that can be put into service today while the decarbonized infrastructure of the future tomorrow is planned, designed, and built. Thank you. We have a lot of work ahead of us.